Motion to approve meeting minutes for April 24. Okay. All those. Aye. Right. We're done. Aye. Uh, any comments from the public on issues not mentioned on the agenda? Not that you guys have an agenda, I get it, but okay. Is there anything we should be bringing up? Not that I know of, Rich, but. <laughs> Uh, unless you've seen the American Sportsman, too. I have. Okay. Um, public hearing at 4 o'clock, continued ever source. We're not going to continue that at this point, correct? Right. Okay. Uh, so 4.15, we are past 4.15. So that's canceled as well. So maybe, new business. Maybe we should just give a quick. Yeah, a little synopsis okay. for the purpose Why we of it. Go ahead. Um, so we had a, a site visit with um, rep representatives from Eversource at 4 o'clock and 4.15 to look at uh, possible locations for the uh, poles and the uh, regulator banks. And because uh, the board of Eversource um, wants to explore different locations for the uh, for the for these installations, uh, Eversource is being required to restart the public hearing. So they need to resubmit the petition for the locations, which would have notification to the butters. So, um, I think we hope that those locations that we discussed are more agreeable for everybody. And, and I think I would add that, that, that the lo new locations are much more neighbor friendly, I, I believe. So, yeah. keeping in mind their site views, et cetera. Right. Okay, and uh, we don't know when that next hearing will be, correct? Right. We have a guess. We'll restart the, they need to restart the process. Right. And like, he, like we were told, it would likely be ever source resubmitting. Okay. Um, one day alcoholic beverage license application. Wine and malt beverages uh, from John Morin. Uh, the bikes fight cancer. Um, 102 Christian Lane, wait. Date plan June 15. Are you Mr. Morin? Yes, I am. Is it Morin? Morin? Morin. Morin, sorry. What do we got? Uh, we're doing a charity bike ride and we're going to offer post-ride um, beverages uh, for the after after gathering and lunch. Just for the athletes, for, for the fans as well? Um, for, yeah, for um, uh, people with the participants also. So participants will receive a free drink, one free drink voucher, um, and then anyone else would be required to buy and uh, the or, donate. or donate. The uh, organization we will work with would donate the dollars back to the fundraising. And, and who is going to, do you have a We're like, still working partner? on that. You we are. we have had a um, Berkshire Brewery has agreed to donate product. Um, we're looking for it, but they, um, uh, we're looking for someone to also step up and maybe help us with some other assets, whether donation like mugs or cups or t-shirts or something like that. So we, we, have, we have a backup plan of Berkshire Brewery with two certified um, pourers uh, who have TIPS licenses. Um, if we can't find another brewery to supply someone to run the tent. And one of two is that fire? No, it's the Yankee can. Sorry, it was Yankee can. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's great. We're hoping this is the first of many years. That, so, right, so you want to make this an annual event, not just a, a, a snapshot in time. Yeah. Um, do you already have plans for, like, is this going to be in a tent? Yeah. Um, is it going to be enclosed, that sort of thing? Yeah, so it'll be under the tent, Okay. Um, which will be on the north side of the factory, similar to my understanding of the marathon desk. We're going to yeah. be checking out the marathon this week and half marathon. Because I thought theirs was at Hitchcock, because we're the Oh, oh, I didn't realize that. I know that their whole, I thought their entire setup was there, but I know that they had overflow in different places, so I didn't know what they're. So we're going to check out that. We don't have any relationship with Hitchcock at this point. Okay. Oh, this is a map, yeah. Okay. Yeah, our plan was to have um, a section of the tent and maybe a fenced off area outside the tent for uh, consuming alcohol, where you could go out of that area, kind of like a designated, you know, your garden if you will. Right. 
Okay. And you don't have a, a, a how are you going to sell tickets? I'm just thinking about it. If, if the way the general public wants to support you guys, how would they do that? We were going to identify the process. The, my, our plan was the tickets because we would be giving a ticket to each rider and then anyone else who wants additional would have to buy a ticket. So then hopefully the dollars would be coming to the hands <coughs> anyway. How long is the bike ride? 25 and 50 miles and then a family ride for six. Five and a half. Five and a half. And the participants required to raise a certain amount of money? Um, they are suggested to. They're suggested to. Yeah. yeah. But it's not like the Pan Mass Challenge where you give them your credit card. That's what we do. That's why we're doing this. So this is our fundraiser for the Pan Mass Challenge. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. all of these dollars go directly to Dana Farber. Okay. So we have a lot of uh, Pan Mass participants. So we'll be sharing fundraising with them. But they are also bringing uh, folks into the community to do the ride with us. We're using them to recruit. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. The general thought is there was three was two former um, cancer benefit rides in Western Mass that have disappeared over the last three years. Similar weekend, and we're like, we think that's a, a void that should be filled yeah. to give people the opportunity to help out, out here. Sign me up, I love it. Yeah, the 25 mile is a really manageable ride. I've challenged him with making it very- We're not going into the hill towns. Consumer friendly, yes. Beginner friendly. He thinks we're going to the hill towns. <laughs> the 50 is a little more challenging, but the whole goal is to get people interested in coming back next year. So we're trying to make it as fun as we can. Okay. Um, so I guess Brian, I'm going to make a motion to approve the liquor license. Yeah, and this is just for the alcohol license. You see there's the application. At the moment, doesn't show signatures, but I know Keith sent something in by email. From, and there's another one from Jim Savini. Yeah. So Highway has signed off. We're, we're assuming at least informally, um, police has signed off. These others, I don't see any evidence that they've signed off. So you're basically asking us to sign for the alcohol license, but not necessarily sign the final approval. Right, but I, I, I do want to talk about that event. Okay. Talk about the event application. Okay. Um, I, I just have a question. It, yeah. Uh, on the license application, you checked off all alcohol license. Um, so is this going to be issued to a nonprofit? So the Pan Mass Challenge is um, the organization that is backing us okay. on this. Um, so that's where basically reading the instructions is felt like the right box to check. But we, so I did include their um, nonprofit status letter that is tied to yeah, our yeah, IRS, IRS letter. Is there an IRS letter somewhere in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw the IRS letter. Yeah. But I think it was at, um, it was after the uh, yeah, it. alcohol. It was when some of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I see here. Um, so what what types of alcohol are you planning on serving there? Beer. Just beer. Just beer. Just beer. Just beer. So then it would be a wine and malt license, is what okay. it would be. Right. Yeah. Um, it wasn't as clear on the instructions. So an alcohol license would be if you wanted if you were serving spirits as well. Um, so do you mind if we change that? No. Okay. That's fine. I think we saw the nonprofit parentheses next to there. Yep. Can I assume Yankee Candle is okay with this? Yep. So yep, um, it's right. a letter there it's from, from Brad. Right. So I'm the director of marketing at Yankee Candle's offices. So I'm over in Deerfield. So Brad has been very helpful in coordinating this with me. So we're also promoting this to all the Yankee Candle employees. And then the start the start time eight a.m. to two p.m. What's your what's your plan for serving? When what do you think would be the time when you serve? Are you gonna, I'm gonna guess eight o'clock a little early. Okay, for me know, personally, yeah, but, that's, that's it. Then time. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna guess it's gonna take people three and a half to four hours to do the fifty mile route. Yeah. Because we'll get them back there right around noon. Um, and yeah, I would guess eleven to one probably. And it's early enough in the day that we don't imagine people hanging around too long. They'll have things to do. Father's Day's the next day. So right. and hopefully we'll just be a morning event. 
and the people who did the 25 mile, what we built to have stuff to do? So they will actually, we're staggering the start. Oh, so okay. They start later, okay. yeah. and they're typically going to be a slower pace anyway. Yeah. So, so the goal is to time it when everyone's kind of coming back between that 11, 12, 30 window. And the family part as well. Yeah, yeah so they, they start, even, they start even later. Yeah. So then you don't also have them going all out at the same time. Yeah. yeah. We'll have, we will have activities. There'll be a food truck there. And then there'll also be cornhole and games and things like that. So first year we're getting our legs under us, figuring out what people really need. But those will just be a few basics. And is Yankee an official sponsor or are they just providing venue? Venue. Brian, what else so in terms of in terms of the license, uh, the license itself that would be issued by the board, um, does it make more sense to, to make it from like ten to two or eleven to two or something like that instead of eight to two? I, um, I think I know it's, it's a little bit confusing. I, 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 but you do you, you care, Joyce? I I think it will it will look better if it's not eight a.m. But I I don't I expect we'll have much of a argument from these folks if we were to change it to 11. Yeah, I just, I just, again, I, it, what I, I know, I'm saying what I've said before. We can do this with whiteout. I don't want us to become the morality police, right. but. Um, but do you mind we change, anyway. change it I would to request two. actually that two. it would be 1030. 1030. Because there will be some that come back a little early and yeah. they don't yeah. have them. Yeah. yeah, then, yeah, then let's. I mean, so you want to say 10? It is nice when the, when the paperwork shows kind of the same thing that we're kind of expecting on the ground. And, and I have no, and problem, no problem with some leeway. We're not serving until 1030. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, 1030. So, do we need so a 1030. 1030. We'll do it all at yeah. once. It's not related. It's related. It's not related to this, but in terms of food trucks, I don't know what Board of Health. So they will Does the Board of Health need yeah. to do anything with the food trucks and have yeah, so you food trucks they're so good about it. So they this uh, is a couple that they are here in Hatfield. Yeah. They actually do uh you know, handle offices, so they actually get uh, a certificate from whatever town they go to. Okay. So great. whenever they're going to a town they are responsible for getting their certificate. Okay. Yeah. It just be one truck or multiple? Just one. Um, unless we have a surge in the next couple weeks of participants and we'll need more. <coughs> Typically a food truck can service up to about 125, 150 people um, without too much hassle. Mostly hot dogs, hamburgers, that kind of thing? Um, they do tacos and stuff, yes, that kind of food. So if we did get more than 125 people registered, we probably would look to get a second. Right, and you'll have non-alcoholic beverages as well? Yes. Yeah. Amy, do you have a copy of the one for Western Mass? It's got the I don't know. Yeah, I mean there. This? Yeah. But that one. This one you yeah. want? Yeah. Okay. Just read out the conditions that were on that one. So yeah. if the board might want to think about The special license, license conditions? Yeah. Right. Uh, the area in which alcohol is to be served shall have clearly marked boundaries. The entrances and exits to the area in which alcohol is to be served shall be monitored to ensure that all alcohol stays within the designated area. But we're not preventing someone's kids from going into that area with them. There's no safety today. Right. Okay. No, the, the idea with those, I think, the board it was the board's intent to make sure the alcohol remains contained. Yeah. So, right. What are people walking down Christian Lane with right. beers in their hand or, or something? Or into the yeah. factory. Or into, <laughs> into the factory. Well, yeah. that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, get tour, that's right. I know Brad doesn't want that, so. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would, like I would not mind if those conditions were. I mean, we should just uniformly do those to the same kinds of events. It's and something that you I might just want to add. It's probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I know. yeah, we're, we're not suggesting things that you wouldn't want. Yeah. Yeah. But kids are allowed in that area. They're just obviously not going to be yeah. consuming alcohol. Right, right. Okay, I'm good. Anybody else? And then, uh, we, so, would it still be contingent on the on the receipt of the of the town of the liquor of the uh, of the liquor liability insurance? Yes. yes. Okay. So one thing that hasn't been submitted yet is the liquor liability, proof of the liquor liability insurance. Okay. So any motion would probably, should be contingent on okay. the receipt of, of Okay, Mass Challenge doesn't have one in their back issue. pocket that you can Before use? Not that we can use. Not that we really? can use. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we okay. weren't sure if the beer vendor was gonna supply that or if it was up to us. Okay. Um, so we'd like, uh, we are submitting an application that's pending now. 
So I guess I would move that we uh, approve this with the time change, with the uh, same conditions we put on the, uh, the one that you just read out. The um, insurance, the alcohol insurance. Uh, and then a pending and a contingent on the insurance coming. So those three things. And wine. And more oh, wine and, and oh, yes, wine and switching to beer and wine. Or wine and bottles. Wine and malt. Wine and malt. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay. Awesome. Good. So in terms, it, thanks. Just one, just one quick thing before you guys head out. Um, in terms of the special event, um, mm. yeah. Permit. So I think they've, they've like you like you mentioned, Joyce. They've had conversations with with Chief Savini about about whether the police detail may be needed or not. Um, I think they can leave that for his discretion. Um, I, agree I to talked to him today, it, and we decided that one would be able to do it because of the waves would be able to. Okay. One officer would be able to move along um, and cover all the needs. Okay, great. Um, I don't know that you've heard back from the fire department, right? I have not yet. Um, but we'll follow up with with John on that. We're back from, from South Cap from the EMS, I believe, right? Yes, that's just not listed on there, but they did speak to Zachary Smith, and that is yeah. upset. And highway, we talked to the Board of Health about the food truck, so I mean, no. they seem to have that at their eyes. So, so okay. Roster keys, we'll just need to grab the second. Yes, so, okay, so you're saying that, that uh, basically everybody but the fire department is waiting? Yeah. As in the fire department, unlikely to. Yeah, I don't know what else. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so I guess I'm wondering at this point is once we follow up with John, are you okay if I sign this up if I sign this application? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. okay, and you guys should feel free to put material. I was gonna ask that here. If you had somewhere that we could put something, right? In the in the in the lobby area, in the foyer area. Do we have any lawn sign? Is there anywhere that we could be able to put a lawn sign? Brian, there are no Restrictions on that, are um, Well, we don't, we see them up for the Western Mass. Mothers have to, uh, right. they're fine, nothing. Right. Never really done with it, so. So feel free. Okay. You know, the, the, here, the library, the old town hall. Fantastic. Whitley, the, we're being very strategic in our placement. Anywhere that cyclists go, we're not as concerned about motorists. They're not gonna be able to lead it as fast. Right. Well, you guys know what that would be, yeah. obviously. Yeah. The library would be the ideal. Thank you. Yeah. It'd probably be a courtesy to check it with them, too. Okay. Right. Um, old Town Hall, because of that, the left hand turn that people take off Haydenville Road. Yeah. Because that's, that's like, I, I wish people yeah. paid a charge a toll because it's pretty well traveled. That's how I came to work this morning. Let's see. Okay, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you all next year. Uh, you might see me biking. Awesome. You never know. I'll give you a coupon code. I'd love it. That'd be great. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now we can officially distribute it. Okay. Thank you. Are you going to do the century ride? No. Oh, it's a half century? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Here we go. Thank you all. Appreciate so the twenty. So so it doesn't. Say, so so what do you have to raise? What's the minimum? A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so forty dollars registration. $100. That's easier than the Pan Mass. What is it? What are they up to? Fifty six hundred dollars or something? Just five. Just five. Just, just five. Just five. Thanks, you guys. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right, Brian. Um, yep. Old business. Yep. Town hall zoning. Yep. So I thought we should just probably discuss um, what happened with the Zone Board of Appeals. Yeah. Um, and you, both of you probably have a clear understanding of what happened uh, that I did. Yeah. But I couldn't give it a well, shot. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see what they did in writing. They, they right. I left they before they, but they haven't submitted that? I don't know, I, haven't, I have not seen anything in writing. Okay, because um, they were gonna write their decision after they talked to the other people who were there, so I didn't stay late for that. Did you, you know, come back for that? Uh, I stayed, but no, they did. 
No, I don't know what they wrote after that, but that was their own doing. No. Yeah. They, they commented on, on uh, the use policy on either the third or fourth bullet yeah, on that in section up. 10 or 11 that I'll be able to find it in a second. Select board having authority to change the requirements or waive requirements mm -hmm. uh, to the to the use policy. I guess it was to grant exceptions. To grant exceptions. Point three to grant exceptions. To grant yes. exceptions. It was that. And they wanted it. I think we're proposing to change that. That it would go through CBA. Any exceptions to that would go through CBA. Well, that'd be all well and good if they had, if that was in their purview to do that, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Nobody yeah. asked, and that was one question I had after. Can they tell the select board how to implement the use policy, I guess, is really what they're. Yeah, that's why I'd be interested to see what they put in writing. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if this is what they're supposed to do, but I think what they wanted to do was to somehow um, address the very small kernel of what this person's complaint was, which was that basically we could, with no more notice than putting it on our agenda and posting it 48 hours in advance, that we could waive any of the rules that are in that document. So when we spoke of it, we were talking about you know, maybe the Girl Scouts don't have to pay the fee, or right. you know, th those kinds of things. Um, they say that that, number three, um, would allow us to change the use of the building as under a similar kind of waiver. That we could allow an event that otherwise would not fall under the historic or civic use. Right. Uh, and they were not as concerned about uh, the next uh, sub bullet there, number four, because that one required notice to the abutters as well as doing it at a public meeting. Um, we do have all of our meetings in public. We do have the agenda posted in advance. But that the, the fact of notifying the abutters seemed to mean number four was from the ZBA's point of view. So I think what they were saying was, it'd be really good if you'd rewrite that number three. Because to say something like, you won't change the use when you make one of these, or we would notify butters if we're ever gonna make a waiver, or I, I don't really, that's why the, seeing what they put in writing would be really important, but the, you know, I, I'm just an old-fashioned usurper here, you know. Um, that I, I don't really know um, if they're uh, allowed to tell the board of selectmen what you can do with your policy, because there's a policy. It seems odd that the ZBA would be. Yeah, I, it, it does sound odd. So I, I think, um, their heart is in the right place. They wanted to find something that would make this, you know, neighbor, someone who we would like to be a good neighbor with, um, you know, make them happy to whatever extent they make them happy. But if all we have to add to number three is, you know, uh, within the allowed zoning, I mean, if, if it, we might we might keep everybody happy by adding three words to that or one sentence yeah. to that phrase that um, that, that would make you know, that would make these make people be more sure that we're not going to change uh, the the use of the building to some kind of a commercial you know rent a center or something right. like that. Um, that's that's my reading of it from being in the room and I, uh, I did not you know in the moment I didn't know if they really have a right to do that or not, but I figured yeah. they're, I'm not going to be able to stop them right then and there. Right. Uh, right. But I, I'm sure our attorney can, uh, right. can make good suggestions about what are possible things. I understand there's a 20-day period 
within which we can appeal. Um, I don't know how expensive an appeal would be compared to adding three words to a document. Yeah, it's... But then we can change the document again. No, no. Well, Brian, what did the council say? Um, well, actually, I, I've spoken to him since then. Um, but he's going to, I'm sure he would tell me the same thing that was written in his, in his um, follow-up memo, which was prior to the Zone of Board of Appeals meeting. Um, and I, I think there is a real question of, of jurisdiction here. Um, it's, it's, it's clear that, the, that town uses are controlled by the zoning bylaw. Um, I think, and I don't think there's any disagreement on that. Um, that's the reason the board went and got a special permit to make the physical modifications to the town hall two years ago. Um, if the board didn't think it was subject to the zoning bylaw, why would we wouldn't have gone and got a special permit? We just would have went ahead and started the construction and said, too bad. Um, but it's clear the town is, is subject to the zoning bylaw. Um, so under 40A section six, which is that deals with non-conforming uses and vested rights, the language and there's corollary provisions in the zoning bylaw that say um, there are non-conforming uses allowed in Waitley, and if your use is if your use is considered non-conform non-conform pre-existing non-conforming use, or I should say lawful pre-existing non-conforming use then you have the right to continue that use um, into the future. And that's what the building inspector said. It's a, it's a lawful pre-existing non-conforming municipal use. And the select board, as a matter of law, the select board can't, the select board can't change those, what that use is. And I don't think there's any disagreement about that. Um, so I, I think we all agree that if we, if this was to change into some commercial venue, that we should go and get a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. If we're if we're to turn it into a restaurant or something like that, I don't know what discussions have for. Or if it was this wedding venue, and we're going to and we were going to lease it out, I think that's outside the scope of the historical uses, and I, I would recommend that the board would get a special permit for that. Um, but within the historical uses that the town or, or the select board has a vested right to continue, the, the custody control of that building lies with the select board. And with that, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of council, is the right to adopt a policy to administer the building the way that you see fit. So long as we're within this umbrella of what the historical uses are, the select board really has discretion as to how to manage that building. And I think we're getting, I think there's a misunderstanding about what the scope of the policy can do and what it does. It regulates the manner in which the building is used within that umbrella of the historical uses. The policy, in my opinion, is not meant to, it is not, it was never intended as the select board asserting the right to go outside of the historical uses without a special permit. And that's where I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. Yeah, I think that sounds um, like um, because it's consistent with what I heard. At the because as a matter of law, I, the town is subject to the zoning bylaw. And in any policy that the select board adopted, or the cemetery commissioners adopted, or the water commissioners adopted, as to, as to how they use their as to how they they use the, their property or facilities under their control is still subject to the zoning bylaw. Um, so, yeah, they did talk a lot about instances. Was there an instance when um, has there been an instance when the use was violated, for lack of a better word, when the the inappropriate use was allowed? Right. And they well, they had talked for a long time about well you'd have to wait until there was an inappropriate use allowed. That's or, true. W a word similar to that. I don't know if I exactly. That's the way. That's <laughs> that's the way. That's the way zoning works. It's, it's typically complaint driven, and then there's a request for enforcement from the building inspector if the if the inappropriate use is yeah. as held there and um, a cease and desist letter. 
So I'm, I, what I'm getting at is, is I think there's a real jurisdiction question as to whether the ZBA can, um, can have any influence over this policy. Because the policy itself is not inactive zoning. It doesn't, it doesn't come under the Zoning Act. And um, really the select board has, has, has discretion for, to, to administer property. That's, that's under its control. And, and I think it's fair, so, it's, I, I want to make sure that we, we keep our jurisdiction because that's what town bylaws require. But we should be, it, it, it's not so much what the ZBA brought down in an opinion at that, at that hearing. It's, I, I think it is, Probably understandable to listen to the, I think Joyce, this is what you were alluding to, to the property owners nearby saying, how can, how can, so how can we as a select board give them comfort that we, we have their concerns in mind when we make the decisions we make? Um, and I don't think anyone truly knows that, you know, do we know what that building was used for back in 1860? No, we that's substantial good. documentation. Right, of, records. Of, oh. yeah, I, get that. I get that. I get that. But, yeah. so, I, I guess, I don't, I, I'd like to wait until we get whatever we get in writing. Yeah. But um, if, I don't know if an appeal is on the table, it's, no. Or if an appeal is even necessary, but I know there's a time limit on that. That's the question of whether. And well, we haven't done anything in writing yet, so it's the clock hasn't started to tick yet. I, I, I think what they're waiting for, Jonathan, or what they wanted, Jonathan, was something in writing that would make them happy that going in the future, this board or whatever board was sitting here would uh, look seriously at the use of the building. And I think the way it was written now, they weren't comfortable with this, with the general statements in there. They wanted something more specific, and that's what what ZBA said they would do if it came to to a, a change in use of the building. And, and that's, we're required and, and to do that by law. The zoning bylaw, 48 section six, in the zoning bylaw, require the town to seek a special permit. To change a non-conforming use, or to or to or to take on an additional use that's not within the that umbrella of the historical uses. That's whether that's whether that's stated in your policy or not. Well, I don't know. That's what the, that's what the law is. Yeah. Um, you could have what, let's let's assume we never adopted a policy. That's still what the law is. So, Brian, what if we just had, it's not the right term, but for lack of a better term, a preamble to our policy saying that. That this exists within us. Within, within, the, the, within, the, within the zoning bylaws of the town of Waitley. That's, that's, that's possible. I, I mean, Mary Lou did send me an email that I received this morning with some suggested language. Um, you see, that, that never came up in discussion. What's that? What you're suggested to the language. Zoning by, no, it was a zoning bylaw, reference to a zoning bylaw. That never came up. Huh. Now, the, the, the thing that, that was also discussed is, is the, there was a response from our attorney directly to the CBA. Yep. That, I don't remember seeing that. Did you? Did you, our attorney, send it? Where did it go? Because it was it was handed. It went to the CBA. Okay. Because yeah. it was handed to their attorney that was sitting here, and we took a break for five ten minutes for him to read that yep. to see if he he agreed. And at first, maybe he didn't, but towards the end, he said he had no problem with that. And because because CBA asked, do you want to respond to what our attorney said? Yeah. The latest, and 
first they didn't answer until afterwards they said, no, we don't need to respond any further. And that's when I, th I think ZBA said that we'll put that condition in there on the, on the use policy, whatever, change the use policy. And that they seem to indicate, their attorney, that, that was fine and nothing, I get the impression nothing else had to be done. I, I honestly think that just that preface it, preface the, preface the, 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 the use policy with that these, the, the actions of the select board will follow the zoning bylaws of the town of Wheatley. I, that's essentially what this language that was suggested talks about. Right, so just um, be, be overt about it. Whereas, so, so, so at the end of the day, I, I, I don't know what the point of disagreement is. I don't know I ever understood what the point of disagreement was. Um, but there is a jurisdictional question that's been raised. Right. Um, I think we need to wait until we get to yeah. that. Right. Wait till you see yeah. it writing, right? Because right. you can talk all day about scenarios. Right, right. right. It's, not, it's hypothetical at this point. Yeah. But it turns out we were not usurpers, is what you're saying. That's what I'm hearing. We were not usurping anything ever. That, uh, my opinion is that it may have gone the other way. Yeah. Quite frankly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, MOU with Furcock yep. on regional assistance planning grant. Yeah, we should do it. Get it in in time to hopefully get some of that help. This goes to so we talked about this. Um, either Jonathan or everybody, everybody can sign. There's there's spaces there. I think at the bottom. Oh, okay. Um, this is for regional energy planning assistance. So we talked about at our meeting on the tenth, I think. Yeah, something. And we're like looking that. for assistance with. Um, Planning for EV charging stations and um, assistance with uh, trying to come up with uh, solar financing mechanisms that Joyce had talked yeah. about at that meeting. So this allows uh, for COG to, they're essentially bundling a, uh, a bunch of applications together from various towns to apply for this regional energy planning, planning grant. All right, that's signed. Uh, updates. Rich, do you want anything? Or do you? Would you like to speak about? I mean, well, I was trying to understand if it had something to do with bylaw change, and I guess that's why I came because it was really oh. clear to me is the, the new bylaw change that went through the town meeting for a municipal historic building. I was trying to understand how this might have played into that. Um, so, yeah. um, and and I'm, I did a certain amount of. Um, language I'm not familiar with, obviously a bunch of things that I'm not privy to that, so I'm trying to catch up and oh. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was a place based on what I saw in the um, uh, the meeting minutes, whether there was something that I needed to ask questions about, so that's the only reason I'm here. Okay. And plus I didn't want to make dinner. I was kind of avoiding that. <laughs> this is way more fun. <laughs> There's going to be a new burrito place in South Deerfield. I don't think it's open. Um, oh, excellent. Citizens coming to you. I, I, I think it's, I, I'm trying very hard to incorporate myself into more things and within the town. I realized off, uh, very poignantly that I haven't done a good enough job myself. And so I'm attempting to make that effort and uh, continue that effort as long as I can. All right. Uh, I think we should uh, point them to uh, a yeah. committee. Let's find out. The Cultural design. Council needs people, I'm sure. Great thing about Cultural Council is you have a few meetings there in the fall, and the rest of the year you're free. And you're everybody's friend because you give away money. And you're everybody's friend because you give away money. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so I would be willing to nominate you to the Cultural Council. It's a, it's a, it's not a heavy lift. Um, that it's nice people, and I think that that's a great way to get to know people. What else could we get them on? Just do a blanket appointment to all vacancies. I think all vacancies. <laughs> No, ser seriously, that's that's a way to like have a little time set aside to get to know a little bit more about what's going on in different places. Well, it has to take an interest in the planning board possibly as well, you know, because I read the zoning board, the zoning rules, simply because. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they kind of yeah. They, Apparently nice there was heavier. That would be a conversation you would have to uh, the moderator. Yes, I realize that. Yeah. Yet to decide whether that's uh, an 
approach I need to take or not. I'm hoping that if I were to do something, I want to make sure that I have something to offer. I don't want to muddle into something unaware of what my place would be if I want to be able to offer something of value to any committee that I would be a part of or any organization, whatever it may be. I want to make sure that I have something to offer of value. Uh, and so there, there is going to be, I believe, that we intend to resurrect the open space committee because of the interest in trails and back roads and back streets and main drags and um, and I think with your background and what you do for a living that's one of the you know and it's about the character of the town it's about it's about general usage of the town I don't know we haven't gotten there yet and I got to wrap my arms around how we resurrect the open space committee I, we've talked about it a little bit here but I think that's a that goes right to the heart of what Whitley is all about um, and how we continue to grow the town but you know in a way that the town sees itself as aspiring to to be viewed as and that's a horrible syntax I understand that I don't know we'll have to work on it. what's that we'll work on it okay okay what else um Time of interrupt You have in your packet three letters from Procog in relation to various zoning issues that are going on in the town. Um, one is concerned about a sign at the Wildflower Society. The other has to do with a concern about a barn on North Street. Um, and the other one has to do with the White Bridge Campground. Um, there's some issues with the White Bridge Campground currently, and I don't. I believe the Board of Health has not issued a permit uh, for it to open. There's, there's issues um, that they're working with with the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission about um, some, se um, some septic issues um, and a couple uh, building code issues that need to be addressed before um, they're going to be allowed to open. That's those. Um, sprinkle work is continuing at the elementary school. The first part of the project was to was for the company to measure all the, the sprinkler drops. They've done that um, and they expect to be completed before um, the end of July. So everything should be all set before school opens next year. Um, castaways, I've still no news on the castaways license transfer. Um, the sale has not gone through and the license, well the license transfer has not happened so the sale has not gone through. Um, I have emailed the, the the attorney representing the castaways, current owner, and if, to see if he had any new information. And he said he, he was he said he was told that they had a very busy time of year and a lack of inspectors, um, and that's what's caused the delay. But it's an awful long delay. Um, so I don't Who are not? So no action. They haven't taken any action one way or another. They? No. Okay. No. Okay. Um, Last week I went to a pre uh, presentation by the uh, UMass Clean Energy Corps students who did an energy assessment of the, of the elementary school. And um, hopefully we can get them to do a presentation here uh, for the, maybe it would be the school committee, the select board, or, and the finance committee, capital planning committee, or, or whoever, but it was a really interesting presentation about what they found with the school, opportunities for, for energy savings and, and, and cost savings. Um, one of the, one of the uh, well, a couple of neat things were apparently the, the gymnasium roof, uh, the gymnasium ceiling is all tile and there's no tight air seal um, oh. through those tiles so the hot air comes up and it goes through the tiles and it goes out. Or, you know, so it was interesting when they showed a picture of the, of the thermographic image uh -huh. and you could, every tile was outlined. Oh, uh, yeah. You see where the air was yeah. escaping. So they suggested that that's some, some sort of hard ceiling, even if it's sheet rocking. Uh -huh. Tree rock or something, um, and there was issues with the with the roof, and um, they wanted to insulate the roof um, and create the building envelope there, where it's, there's not really a, a, a definable building envelope above the above the uh, ceiling tiles, above well, the ceiling tiles, because um, you have the mezzanines and you have different areas, and there's not really a good uh -huh. spot. So they think if you can 
um, spray foam on the yeah. underside of the roof. Um, it would do a lot. Okay. Um, they, they suggest boiler replacement um, and in two boilers instead of one. Um, and they think that would solve a lot of problems and save save a lot of energy and money. But we'll, we'll, okay. there'll be more to come for that. Um, that's really about it. Um, now that the town meeting's over, we'll be signing that the design contract for the sidewalks for Chestnut Plain Road. Um, and we'll want to keep obviously keep the various interested uh, stakeholders that are interested in the project involved in that project. Can we get that those just not to backtrack? Can we get them on an agenda in the near future? And actually, I think your idea is a good one to get the school committee here, the principal, as well as the uh, at least rep some representatives from from CPC. Although the school committee has one representative on CPC already. Right. Talking about school energy thing. Yeah, yeah. School, school energy thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it was it was an interesting presentation. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to get that on the agenda sooner rather than later. Most of those are would be green committee eligible. Yeah. Well, and EverSource is going to have some programs for that as well. I would bet my last dollar. Did yeah. we get green energy grant for that two years ago for all town buildings, including that one? For the school, the, green, the town's green community designation grant was used for an energy management system for the school. Um, it was used for uh, to change out the lighting, I believe. Yeah. Go so we apply for more. We can apply for more every year as long as the prior year's project has been wrapped, has been wrapped up. Anything else? Um, and now, again, now that town meeting is over, um, I think it would be good to get an ad out for the custodian for the town buildings to, you know, to make sure that stuff being done at the town hall in here. Okay. Hurl, you, Hurl, he should be included yeah. in that. Okay. We don't need a motion for that. Nope. And it should be sent to anyone who is currently doing work on the town's behalf in any of those buildings. I think if the library has their own. Library has their own, Hurley has somebody. So if we're gonna if we're gonna put it all under one umbrella, we wanna make sure that everyone has equal access to that RFP. Yeah, we'll send it out. Anything else? That's about it. All right, I'd like to, um, Make a motion to appoint Wayne Hidkowski to the rec committee. Yes. We have eight right now. Do you have nine? I would second that. He's got kids, he's got know how, he's got he's interest. Got, yeah, he's got some skills. He's That's breathing. Agreeable to him. Uh, very. I wouldn't okay. nominate someone. Who okay. No, just check in. Just check in. I mean, you might, you might sneak somebody in there. Yeah, you might. He's not going to put Richard on He's not going to come in and put his hand on the Bible if he's not interested. So come on. He's interested in doing anything and everything. So, um, I, so. Have no, I have no problem with that. So do I hear a motion? I, 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 I seconded. Yeah. Second. All those? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, you'll send in a note to have him come in and take the oath of office. Of office oh yeah. For any any to, any position in town. Yeah. You, need you thought I was kidding when you had to put your hand on the Bible. <laughs> no, you, you can just do this. Right. Yeah. But if you want to bring in a Quran, you can do a Quran. Yeah. You okay. can do uh, Torah. You can do. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? I will adjourn this meeting. All right. Oh, it's okay. Right. Oh, did we forget something? Unajure. Unajure. Which one did we What? what? Well, we do, we do have a list of here to discuss summer meeting times and dates. Oh. But I don't know if you... What they just said. Summer meeting times and dates. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, I have my schedule is on the line. The chair can just adjourn line. the meeting. They don't have to put a mic. Make we can make catch Amy. We can catch <laughs> Yeah. Um, my schedule opens up completely for May and June and July. Um, in uh, July, I'm teaching, but it's only until three. Um, so uh, I can actually make it out for earlier meetings than I otherwise would. Um, that's, uh, but I will not be here for all of August. I'd go back to Stockholm for a month. <laughs>
I was going to say. Did you I was going to say that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's only for a month. And I know in August we often only have one meeting, so I'm feeling like um, that might not be. Okay. Uh, well, as people on the as people on the committee know, I will not be here for the meeting on the 29th. Yeah. Um, Can you do that meeting if we do it earlier or no? Or is that are you on? I, I I can do that meeting if later. No, not not later. I can do the meeting at like I gotta be in Greenfield by five fifteen. So I could do it at three thirty. You know, I I I think we should keep to keep keep more evening sense. meetings if we want the public to be here. We're gonna talk about the whole hearing with these people uh uh, yeah. Invited, uh, <coughs> uh, I think the evening meeting. If we got a public hearing like that, if Fred doesn't want me here, that's fine. To, no to keep it, to, to get the public here, nobody comes at three or four o'clock. That's working. That's working during the day. Uh, well, let's be fair. Very few people come here at six o'clock. Well, right, but at least give them the opportunity. Depending on the time, we get Rich or Dan. Yeah. So yeah. you you could make an argument oh. that right, but you could also make an argument that that earlier meetings make it easier for, for senior citizens to well, because they don't want to drive at night. Right. So that, you know, you, you, you go you either can way to pay Paul. Um, so yeah. keep the twenty ninth as it is. So. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, mean, I don't really have an objection to six o'clock okay. meeting, but I'm putting out there is twelfth, twenty sixth. Twelfth, twenty sixth at six is that what's that fine? What are you, what are you talking? The 12th and 26th would be the second and last Tuesdays oh, in okay. June. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like we just wanted to. Yeah. Okay. That six. We keep it That's that. fine. Okay. Uh, and then for July, the second and last Tuesdays would be the 10th and the 31st. And the 31st. I, I don't have my summer schedule set yet. Okay. Let's wait for that. Yep. Wait for that. Wait for that. So May 29th. And my set. June 12th and June 26th. Yeah. All at six. August, whenever you guys want. <laughs> I still have your laptop. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could. I could. I suppose. Okay. Right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Remember, Is we don't need it. it. I can oh, say yeah, it. Adjourn. Say it. Okay. Oh, man.